Good morning, peeps. What's good? Jenny Raw Real Unfiltered here. Um, I'm at work. It's 9:10 Chicago time. 146 days today. Whoop whoop. No alcohol, no cigarettes, no pills, no weed. So sober as fuck. Like for real, for real. Um, it gets easier, peeps. For those of my, for those of you who are on this journey with me. Um, maybe you're, you know, currently in recovery like I am, you know, staying sober. Maybe you're in active addiction but um, toying with the idea of getting sober. I highly encourage you to do so. Um, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't hard, but it's so... So fucking worth it. I mean, a million times over again, I can't even begin to describe how much better I feel um, emotionally, spiritually, physically. I just, I'm so much better in so many ways. Um, so I highly encourage you, if you are thinking about taking that leap of faith and getting help, and seeking, you know, help in getting you to recovery, I highly suggest you do so. You're worth it. Um, if you haven't seen any of my past videos, again, Jenny Raw Real Unfiltered, please subscribe. But I highly encourage you to go watch some of my videos. Uh, like the videos if you would. It's much appreciated. But I, f I feel like you would definitely find some solace and some help. Um, definitely relatable for sure. I battled a wicked, wicked um, addiction to, well, a few things, um, but my main devil is was Norco. Um, you know, I toy on the idea of do I say was or is, even though I'm currently sober, it's always going to be an issue for me. So I'm going to say that my devil is um, Vicodin, Norco. I mean, I, I was into the pills. I was into... Like I said, Vicodin and Norco first and foremost, but you know, Klonopin, Valium, anything that would just like take the edge off and chill me out. Anything that could kind of take me away for a little bit was what I enjoyed. Um, in addition to that, it was alcohol, weed, and cigarettes. So I found myself caught in a vortex of these things, and they all had like this powerful grip on me that I just couldn't quite shake no matter how hard I tried I would try quitting one thing but I would always come back to it because of the other things so for me I quickly found out and I don't know how quickly really I think I kind of always knew but I decided one day to kind of just put it in action and, and realize that I overdo the shit out of everything so for me it wasn't like let me quit smoking pot or let me quit drinking alcohol it's like I wanted all of them. One thing made me want everything else. So I couldn't just quit smoking cigarettes because if I was still taking my pills and smoking my pot and drinking my alcohol, the cigarettes were inevitable. Do you know what I'm saying? Same thing with everything else. It was just like a vortex. So I knew that for me, it was all or nothing. I couldn't just stop one thing. I had to stop all of them. And I couldn't do it in moderation. You know, I kind of envy the people, honestly, that can have a drink every now and then or, you know, maybe pop a pill or a few every now and then. I can't do that. I was up to 10, 10 milligram Vicodin every time I took them, guys. Let me say that again. 10, 10 milligram Vicodin or Norco. That's like a fucking... I don't even know like how to describe how much that is for one person, a tiny person. Um, so I, I knew that for me, I had to quit everything cold turkey. I just stopped everything. Now you do you. I always have to say that I'm not a, a licensed professional, I'm not an addiction specialist. I'm not an interventionist. I'm not in any way a professional licensed medical person to give you this advice and say you should do this you should do that you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that I'm just simply telling you I'm an average Joe 
okay? Like most of you out there who had a serious problem with addiction, I always say it's an insidious, insidious disease, and it is. And I'm just kind of relaying my experience and what, how I was and what I did and what worked for me. So I knew that I had to quit everything cold turkey and I knew that it was all or nothing. I couldn't just have a little bit of this and a little bit of that every now and then and every, you know, uh-uh. It's all or nothing, baby, for me. And I feel like that's probably the way to go if you can do it. Because I feel like if you're, if you're going to dapple and, and, and you know, Engage, indulge, that's the word I'm looking for, indulge every now and then. It's just you're setting yourself up for failure, in my opinion. You need it, like, gone. Out of sight, out of mind. That's your best bet, in my opinion. That's the best way to proceed, is to just be done. Um, Just got to throw in here real quick, because it's steady catching my eye. If you're wondering what the fuck all these brown spots are all over my face, if you follow me, You'll know. And if you don't, I highly suggest you go back and watch the videos. Because this channel, peeps, what prompted me to make it was the sobriety. And it will always be near and dear to my heart and probably what I talk about most. But I didn't want to limit myself to that. Because it is an outlet and a healing stepping stone for me. So I wanted to be able to talk about whatever I wanted to talk about when I wanted to talk about it. And, you know, that includes what I do for a living, which is me being a skincare specialist. Um, I love what I do. I love helping people. Maybe that's why I really like talking about my sobriety because all I want to do is help people. So if I can help one person, it's, it's worth it to me a million times over again. The accountability and owning it and putting myself out there, it's in hopes to help one of you. So please listen to what I'm telling you because I've been there. I know. And if I can do it, you can do it. But um, like I said, I talk about other things. And one of the things I've been talking about, um, self-care is huge for me, especially now that I've become sober. I always used to preach it, but I never practiced it. And that's just keeping it 100% real. And now that I am sober, guess what I'm doing? I'm investing a lot more time in Jenny. Self-love, man. It's a beautiful thing. I love myself again for once in a long time. I can honestly look in the mirror and love what I see. I am in love with myself again, and that is the best fucking feeling in the world. And you know what, guys? You might be lacking in your relationships, whether it's your spouse, whether it's just your siblings, your family, your kids. You cannot ever be loved until you love yourself. I should say you cannot be loved fully the way you want to be and need to be until you love yourself fully. So you, it starts with you, people. Like, I get that you want to get sober for other people, but first and foremost, it needs to be for you. Because when all's said and done and the, the day is at its end, you need to be able to look in the mirror and be happy with yourself. And chances are, if you started with yourself and did it for yourself, then everything else is just going to fall into place. But you need to love yourself enough and give yourself that love and that respect and that self-care and that sober life and once you get to know me you'll know that I'm kind of all over the place at times like I go off in my head with all these tangents so it's like and now that I'm sober I actually remember things like I'll lose a thought for a second and then I can pick it right back up whereas before I'd be like mm, forgot what I was gonna say it'll come back to me but my point for that is I started to tell you if you're wondering what all these fucking spots are on my face um, some more self-love, self-care for you. I decided um, after years of wanting to, I decided to treat myself to an IPL treatment, which is a photo facial, which is um, they use a very strong laser and they go in and they um, laser your face and it brings out all your sun damage and your hyperpigmentation. And what happens is so when I say sun damage and hyperpigmentation, a lot of the dark spots you have on your face, it can be from medicines you take, it can be from like tanning beds, um, sun exposure, it can be from like if you're, you know, your hormones as females when we go through pregnancy and we have an excess amount of hormones, we get um, dark spots like hyperpigmentation it's called, where there's a discoloration in the face. So long story short, years of... Me tanning and not being 
I'm good with sunscreen. This is before I got into skincare for a living, but even then I'll admit I wasn't always great with it because who doesn't look better with a tan, right? Well, got all this lovely sun damage and it was not this prominent, but I had the laser therapy two um, days ago, 48 hours ago, and what happens is the dark spots darken like to two shades darker than what they were. So it's a lot more prominent right here. You can see it a lot more. It was not like this before I had it because it wasn't that obvious. But they darken two shades darker. And then after like seven to ten days, it peels off. The sun damage just sloughs off. So it's a beautiful thing. I'm so pumped. I can't wait. Um, but right now it looks kind of funky. Like if you didn't know what was going on with me, you'd probably be like, this bitch has like a lot of shit going on in her face. But... I've never been so grateful for the masks, wearing them in public, it's helped cover it up. But um, I don't know, we're all still a little self-conscious, right? So I'll be the first to admit I am looking at myself like this. I got I feel the need to explain it to you guys. But anyway, um, I finally did it for myself and I'm so happy I did. And really quickly before I get back to my workflow here, um, one thing I wanted to address in this video is I'm kind of, I was kind of in a funk this morning. I actually feel better now just making these videos. Just again, it's healing for me to be able to talk about it and to get my, you know, story out there and speak my testimony and my truth. It really is like healing for me. It's a great distraction because if you've seen my videos, I talk a lot about distraction and replacing bad habits with good habits and how to distract yourself and be ready for those triggers when they come. Um, I encourage you, if you have not, please watch the videos because I feel like you'll learn from them and you'll definitely relate to them. And it's nice to know when you're in this predicament, when you're in addiction, it's nice to know, especially when you're in recovery, that there's people out there that are going through what you're going through and have been what you've, what you've been through and can relate to what, how you feel. So it's huge. You need a support system and just listening to someone like me can be your support system. So please take advantage of it and utilize me. But really quick before I go, um, I was in a funk this morning and I think it was because, um, here's some real shit for you. No one really ever talks about how once they get sober, and it's not everybody, but I feel like a majority of people, they gain weight, okay? And oftentimes it's much um, welcomed weight. Like I was very small. Like people would say to me like, oh my gosh, you're so thin. And I would get so defensive and be like, like roll my eyes, get defensive. You know, my body would just tense up and I'd be like, dude, I eat. Like, what do you want me to tell you? You know, like, and I, I don't blame people for commenting. I mean, sometimes personally, I think that they can keep their comments to their, themselves, especially the way they, they say it. But I don't think anyone that ever said anything to me, like it was a lot of my clients and just, you know, people, but I don't think they had bad intentions when they said stuff to me. I think it genuinely came from a caring, nurturing place. And I think they were concerned, but I think sometimes people come off and they don't realize the way they come off and they came off as like, you're so skinny. Are you okay? What's wrong? You know, is everything all right? And again, I think it always comes from a good place, at least in my experience. I don't think these people at, like were trying to be vindictive at all, but I don't think they realize sometimes the way they say things, the way it comes off. So I would get defensive and I would be like, dude, I know it doesn't look like it, but I can eat. I can eat with the best of them, which I really can. I'm Italian, half Italian, half Polish. And I love food, like food is life. So a lot of it is much welcomed weight, but even if it is welcomed, like when you're actually in on the other side of it, which again, the sobriety, it's a beautiful thing, but I'm trying to address this at the moment. Like none of my shit fits. I, I came to work this morning and mind you, these pair of pants have been in my work cabinet for like months because we shut down during this apocalypse pandemic. So this is the first time of me putting these particular pants back on, but they were my work pants. Guess what, peeps? They don't fucking fit. I can get them on, not really over my ass because it got bigger, and my shit won't zip up and button. And I'm like, what the hell? 
And even though I look in the mirror and I feel good and I think I look healthier and I think I look better, you know, ass got bigger, got some boobies. Just keeping it real with you, but it's still hard. Like Gavin looked at me yesterday, my oldest son. He walked in on me when I was, I was close. I mean, I had um, jeans on and a bra on, so I wasn't like naked by any means, but he's like, I made a comment when I was pulling up my jeans, another pair that didn't fit. And I was like, damn, mama got a little bigger. And he looked at me, he goes, yeah, you did. I'm like, Gavin, and kids are so real, you know, they speak the truth. And he started laughing. He's like, mom, you look good. I'm just saying you did gain a little bit of weight. And then he walks up to my belly and he goes right here <laughs> and he grabbed my belly and he just like lifted it up a little bit. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, glad it's been confirmed because if I thought it was in my head, now I know that my son agrees. So anyway, I just want to say, peeps, like, expect the things, expect them. But you know what? May that be your biggest problem. Because you know what? Like, that's the last piece to my puzzle I haven't incorporated yet. I've gotten sober. I'm doing those soul-soothing things that I love, my soul-soothing walks, you know, my, my YouTube, my being able to put myself out there and talk to all you peeps and hopefully help you and just have someone to relate to and just, you know, some support. I'm doing all the things that make me feel good. I'm taking my supplements and my vitamins and drinking my collagen and having myself, you know, caring treatments and whatever makes me feel good. Investing in myself. That's the last piece to my puzzle is going and doing some type of workout class. Not just for the, you know, the physical benefits. Those will come and they'll, that'll be great. But like just an outlet, another outlet for me to expel my energy and expel my stress. So that just reminded me when I couldn't fit into my shit and I hear my son saying that to me, that just fueled me to find that last piece of my puzzle a little quicker. I'm going to go and I'm going to find a class or a gym or something I can do. I'm an in-person person though. I can't just do it on TV. That's not me. But if you can, more power to you. But I'm going to find that class or that um, routine that exercise routine that, that suits me and is right for me. So I just turned a negative into a positive, which I talk about a lot again in my videos. So my point is, peeps, be prepared for it. You might gain a couple extra pounds, but you know what? Here's the thing. If you gain some weight, if you're anything like me and how I looked, I'm inclined to think that the weight will be welcomed. But maybe you'll get to a point where shit's not fitting and it makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable or self-conscious. Then you know what? You can fix it. You can go exercise. Go do something. And maybe you can, you know, transform your body the way you want it to be. But my point is, it's a lot easier to fluctuate in weight to gain the weight and then lose it is a lot easier than being stuck in this place where you are using self-soothing mechanisms that are not healthy, when you're abusing substances, when you're doing things that are not good for your mind, your body, and your soul. It's a lot easier to go out and exercise and lose some weight than it is to try to sustain this life where you are practicing things, drugs, substances that are just making you feel good temporarily, but they're really killing you in the long run. So you got to weigh your pros and cons here, peeps. And if you're going to gain a little bit of weight, but you're in recovery and you're doing good, then by all means, gain the fucking weight because you can lose that shit as easily as you gained it. If you're able to get through the addiction part of it and you're able to find yourself in recovery and healing, that shit takes strength, dude. You are stronger than you know, and God bless you for that. And I'm just trying to let you know that in order to beat an addiction and to be sober and be in recovery, you are strong as hell. So to combat a couple pounds, you got this, dude. That is like a cakewalk, a walk in the park compared to what you've been through. So my advice to you would be take the high road, get well, get in recovery, get sober, and then those extra pounds you might be worried about, which quite honestly, I'm not even worried about because if I was, I wouldn't be able to sit here and talk to you like this. So 
Do what you need to do to get in recovery. And if you're in there already, power to you. And the weight and all that shit, it'll get better. Trust me when I tell you. But first and foremost, stay well, be well. I'm here for you if you need me. Reach out. Just know that you're not alone. You have support. You have people that love you. I have mad love for you and I don't even know you. I just respect what you're going through and what you've been through. And I'm telling you, if I could do it, you could do it. So stay up, my peeps. Happy Wednesday, dude. Make it count. Jenny Raw, Real Unfiltered here in Chicago. It's probably about 9.30, 9.40 right now. Y'all stay up. I love you. Stay strong. And stay tuned. I'm going live tonight with one of my girls. Probably 8 p.m. Chicago time. Talk to you soon. Stay up. Love you all. Please like this video. Please subscribe. Peace.